Welcome to Literary Libations with Librarians, and we're back in 2021. And this week we're going to be sharing books that we haven't read yet, but books that we are looking forward to reading in 2021. As we talk, the titles that we share are going to appear on your screen, as well as the various formats that they're available in through the Monroe County Library System. If you'd like to get your hands on any of these, your quickest way is probably to call your local branch of the Monroe County Library System and speak to one of the staff there, and they will be more than happy to assist you. If you'd like to do it on your own, you can request physical copies, hardcovers, paperbacks, large prints through our online catalog, and that web address is on your screen now. If you're interested in a digital format, and one of the digital formats is listed as being available for that title, you can do that through one of our two platforms. There is Overdrive, and you may hear Overdrive referred to as Libby. Libby is the name of the app, and Overdrive offers downloadable ebooks and audiobooks, and Monroe County Library System also offers Hoopla, and Hoopla offers downloadable ebooks, audiobooks, and also movies, music, and graphic novels. And the great thing about Hoopla is that there is never a wait for any of the titles that you see on that platform. If you see it, you can download it immediately. And so since we're going to be sharing some of our things, titles that we're looking forward to in 2021, our introductory question for this week is what are you looking forward to in 2021? And I think what I'm looking forward to in 2020, we had a couple of small vacations planned and ended up having to cancel them. And so when we started planning, even last year, we started talking about what could we do that we could look forward to that would be safe during this time of COVID and that we probably shouldn't have to cancel. So we ended up booking a cabin down in Hocking Hills because we figured the state parks, that's all outside, those should stay open. The cabin is on, I don't remember how many acres, but it's a lot. Like you got a whole bunch of property <laughs> that you can walk around and spread out on as well. So we have that booked for spring break for this year. So that's, I think our whole family is looking forward to getting away and, you know, being in a beautiful area and just, enjoying a diff different scenery for 2021 did, for a little bit. We did Hocking Hills this past summer, oh. um, kind of as a last minute, like, oh, let's do something. Um, and it was lovely. It was, we did some hiking. We got up early. We hiked before a lot of people were on the trails. I'm not a big hiker, but I did it and it wasn't awful. Um, but it was really pretty. And yeah, it was, recommend. <laughs> well, good, because we're looking forward to it. And I like walking. I've shared that before. As long as the trails aren't strenuous, I can just walk and walk and walk as long as I've got something interesting to look at. So yeah, so that's what I'm looking forward to in 2021. And with us this week, we have Isabella Arnold, who is a processing clerk at our Dami Administration Building. And what are you looking forward to this year, Isabella? Um, well, I am looking forward to, um, well, I feel like 2020 made me set like my expectations very low for events in my life. Um, but my son is going to be one in a month. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this year brings and what new things he learns. And hopefully we're going to start walking soon. And um, just seeing like, you know, life through his lens is really exciting. And that's my joy of 2021 and 2020 was yeah. all about him. Um, <laughs> of course. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Just like the little things, having him try like more salad foods. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, and the walking and mobility will make things extra exciting. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, he's a speed crawler, so he can get anywhere he really wants to. And he's fearless, so oh. like. Climbing is his thing and head first over everything. He's tough. He's a tough kid. We're fine. Well, that's good. Oh, yeah. Should be fun. <laughs> it will be. Thank you, Isabella. Also with us this week is Kristen Brown, who is a reference librarian at the Bedford branch. And what are you looking forward to in 2021, Kristen? So I kind of have two things that I'm looking forward to. One of them is just spending some more time 
reflecting on myself and doing some self-care. Um, I feel like 2020 was a year that threw a lot at us. And I feel like I want to take this year to really dive into some of the issues that were presented to us and kind of what my role is in that and how I want my role to be in the future with those issues. Um, and I'm also super looking forward to this springtime with planting, um, getting our garden in. I'm really hoping that in the near future we can start doing some more things as far as uh, getting back to our zero waste lifestyle that my family and I were trying to go through before COVID had hit. Um, so it would be really nice if, you know, we could go to the farmer's market again, you know, and do things like that. So that's that's my hope for next year or this year, I should say. I'm still stuck <laughs> in 2020, apparently. I know. It's, it's still, some days it feels that way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kristen. Also with us this week, we have Jen McCarty, who is a reference librarian at the Ellis branch. What are you looking forward to this year, Jen? Well, I'm I'm setting my sights a little bit in the future. Um, I have a milestone birthday coming up in September, and um, my big plan for the last, you know, five years has been, okay, for my birthday, <laughs> um, I wanted to go to Disney World. And so we're we're still tentatively planning it. Um, we'll see, you know, if how things go. But that's something. Even if my vacation doesn't happen like I want it to, I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, I think I, I always really get excited for my birthday anyway. I'm one of those people celebrate me. I'm okay with it. Um, so you know, having kind of you know a milestone, it's it's a little bit like man, getting older. I can't deny it anymore. But it's also a good thing, you know, hey, I've lived through another year or 40. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully having a really big family trip, um, but also just making it to that milestone. <laughs> That's right. And really, it's only better after that. It really is. Good to know. <laughs> it's good. Thank you, Jen. And also with us this week is Jody Russ, the community librarian at the Bedford Library. And what are you looking forward to, Jody? Uh, I I don't have a whole lot planned. I'm gonna take it easy. I think that's gonna be my. That's what I'm looking forward to. Hopefully, a family vacation would be lovely. Um, and I planted. I, I I've probably mentioned before. I planted bulbs this past fall in a new garden space that I made, and um, I think close to 240 bulbs, as a matter of fact. So it better be the most luxurious show um, <laughs> imaginable. So I'm really looking forward to those coming up um, and seeing what happens with that. So simple stuff. So since I don't know about gardening, about when will those bulbs start popping? Is that like April, May? Some of them might even come in March. Oh wow! So they are they are bloomers that should go from March through June. Um, I have I have uh, five different kinds, five different kinds of bulbs out there. So some of them are super early spring, like crocuses, the little ones that you see, the purple and yellow, first things that you usually see in the spring, and then. Um, all the way through alliums, which are the really tall ones that look kind of like a purplish onion seed head on the top. Um, and those would be in June. So hopefully it'll and most of them are tulips. There's uh, I don't know uh, about 175 tulip bulbs in that. Wow. So it should be I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It was a lot of work, so I really yeah. hope it's beautiful. <laughs> You got to go out there and encourage them. As I'm Come digging on, all those no, holes, no, no. Like, um, who on earth does this? This is insane. <laughs> I ended up buying an auger for the power drill. Oh yeah. And using an auger and digging the holes with that. Which they all should come back though too, right? So exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's nice. Yes, they should. We come did. Back we here. did about 50 tulips a couple of years ago, and we lost a few. Squirrels decided they were a delicious snack. Mm -hmm. Um, and we did a variety. So some were early bloomers, some were middle, some were late. And it's kind of fun to see what what am I going to get surprised with this year? What's coming up? Yeah, right. Yeah, because you kind and, of forget. And they yeah. don't all always come up over and over and over again. The daffodils are probably going to be the best performers, but we'll see. I put chicken wire over the top of the space so the squirrels don't dig them up. That's smart. Because my husband loves the squirrels and feeds them all the time. And one of them tries to get in our front door even. It's really rather <laughs> alarming when I go out to get the paper. Um, <laughs> 
he thinks it's cute. I do not. <laughs> uh, but those squirrels better not be digging up my flower bulbs. <laughs> oh, squirrels. Squirrels. See, I would, in our household, I would be the one like, oh, look, it's a cute little squirrel. And my husband would be the one going, no, they're a pest. Get it's a rodent. Them. Yes. My mother feeds them through the window, like in our kitchen. She like hands out crackers to them to see them like grab it with their little hands. Yeah. And, yeah. She puts That's out different foods for them, like donuts and like tortillas, <laughs> just to like see them eating a donut in the train because she thinks it's funny. We had a woodchuck in our backyard last last summer, and a lot of family were like, "Oh, you've got to trap that," or "You've got." I'm like, "But he's cute. He's not hurting anything. I don't have a garden that I'm concerned with." Yeah. You live in my backyard, Woodchuck. You're safe here. <laughs> I'm glad that we're rodent. You know, we're we're welcoming of rodents. You know, <laughs> except for Jody. Jody's not. Don't mess with Jody. I I just don't want them digging up my bulbs. I don't care if they're running around in my yard. I do think they're funny. They're entertaining to watch them running around in the yard. But um, yeah, don't dig up my flower bulbs. That's all. No. Simple. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. We're looking forward to seeing pictures of your garden when it begins blooming. Thank okay. you. And let's have Isabella kick us off with her titles that she's looking forward to reading in 2021. Um, so when this prompt was sent out, I didn't really have anything on my agenda to read. Um, but part of my job here at the library system is to prepare books to be cataloged for our catalogers. And so I spend a lot of time looking at our brand new books that have just come in and haven't been cataloged yet. And that's where I found this Tea and Cake with Demons, <laughs> a Buddhist guide to feeling worthy. And um, the second I took it, like the picture of it for our cataloger, I was like, ooh, I need this on my uh, to read list. Because um, one of my favorite qu quotes that I read from a book that's unfortunately not in our system is, um, that you should invite your demons to have tea and cake with you, have a dance party, thank them for coming, and send them with leftovers. And that whole like philosophy just really stuck with me. And I, whenever I think of, oh, I'm feeling so anxious, it's like, oh, come, have some carrot cake, have a pot of Earl Grey, let's dance it out, and goodbye. And um, so this whole book is about uh, Buddhist teachings um, and like the quote with the book is, what if Buddha was alive today? What would he say about our modern anxieties and our um, modern fears um, and how we handle self-worthiness? Um, so I am really looking forward to reading it because I'm all about that type of stuff. Um, I find Buddhist t teachings to be very interesting and very like connected with the world, with the universe. Um, I mean, yes, I grew up Roman Catholic and everything, but um, I just find it very fascinating to see where I am in myself with the universe and how peaceful I can be with everything that surrounds me. Um, so yeah, it just kind of goes through different Buddhist teachings in the modern world um, and how to you know, bolster yourself up and really acknowledge yourself. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading it. I, it just got cataloged. Um, it was on my desk when I went to work the other day, so can't wait to start reading that. Um, and then my other book is The Art of Happy Moving. Um, and this was another book that was on the shelf to be cataloged that I was, well, I haven't prepared it yet for the catalogers because it's not in date yet, but I saw the spine of it and um, it really reminded me of my favorite Huga and Luga books. Mm -hmm. Just the graphics, so I was like, ooh, what's that? Um, and am I moving? No. <laughs> am I planning <laughs> to move? No. Um, but one day I will probably. And I just thought it looked really cute. Um, and it's really practical. I love a good uh, declutter book or a minimalist guide or something to make, you know, more joy in my life with less things. And so I'm interested to read it. Um, I mean, I guess we are preparing to move in like a few years, so I thought might as well start now. Um, and uh, flipping through it, there's cool like guides in it of um, like different checklists for yourself, uh, different uh, uh, like emergency checklists, like what you should bring with you in the moving truck, um, which I've never moved a house before. Um, I've never moved into a new home. Um, 
so I'm interested in it and it should be fun. Um, it's just a practical guide of what to get rid of when you're moving. Yeah. So, you know, thought that might be good. Um, I was really just attracted to the cover art, which I love a good, like minimal drawings. Um, so yeah. And then I also wanted to give a shout out to another book that's not in the catalog yet. It comes out in April. But it's Jenny Lawson's new book, Broken in the Best Way Possible. Um, I loved her other two books, Let's Pretend This Never Happened and Furiously Happy, which are both in the system. And she uh, does collections of essays of her life, um, just funny anecdotes. She uh, lives with uh, depression and um, with anxiety disorders and just really makes fun of herself for it and what's going on and um she was like an hr rep and had a lot of funny stories about that and let's pretend this never happened um her first book and she just opened up a bookshop in texas called the nowhere bookshop and it looks amazing it's like her book her books in like brick and mortar form like she has all of her crazy taxidermy in it and um, that's her thing. And she likes to find taxidermy animals that were like not taxidermy quite right. And then gives them like personalities and clothes and backstories. And I know one's called like, well, maybe her dog is Ferris Mueller. Um, <laughs> I think maybe it's her cat is Ferris Mueller. And um, she has a badger that's like Ruth Badger, badger Ginsburg. And um, so yeah, I can't wait for her new book. Hopefully there's an audiobook of it. I've never listened to her audiobook, um, but I feel I just started listening to Hoopla audiobooks. I'm real late to the game. I'm usually, I'm not a good listener, 100% not a good listener. Um, but I really enjoy it and I think I would enjoy listening to her speak her own book. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess that's the book I'm really pumped about in 2021. And these other books are just getting me there until that comes out. <laughs> Um, and hopefully that will be purchased soon and in the catalog. And I can't wait to get on that list. I also love Jenny Lawson and I did not know she was a, had a bookstore. And now I feel like that's going to be on my places of that I need to see in my did life. Did you say Texas? Yes, I think she's so in Austin. I finally have a reason to go to Texas. <laughs> yeah, it, not, oh, it hasn't even opened to the public yet because she was supposed to open last oh. spring, but then she got shut down. And then on her Instagram, she posts pictures from inside of it, and it looks amazing. Like, I would travel to Texas to go check it out. And um, I've never been like, oh, I'm going to go on a visit to see a bookstore, but it looks really, really cool. Um, I feel like yeah. that would be so funny if just a group of librarians just like busted in, like, we love you! I feel like Jenny Lawson would also love that. And I also believe that's going to happen to her. <laughs> Is there a conference coming up in Texas anytime soon? Yes, we'll have to see. Yeah. I feel like once you've read her books, you become her tribe. Like, and her tribe is huge and, like, really intense women. And, like, because she had that traveling dress situation for a while that was in the book. Like, they just sent a ball gown around the United States for people to like take pictures in and just be really dramatic in, and it was awesome. And um, yeah, she's definitely, I feel like if I had like a hero board of like people that currently that I look up to and like, you're doing it. And I mean, she has her struggles. Like she even posts about being in like book conferences or to do readings and hiding under a table because she can't get out from under the table with like her crippling anxiety and the fact that she's just like, listen, I'm under a table right now. It's all right. I'll be there shortly. Like hero right there. Yeah. And she is a great listen. I think I listened to both of her last two books. In fact, I listened to them and I hadn't looked at the books. Somebody had recommended it to me and I was like, so I listened to it and didn't realize that I was missing out on what was in, like there's pictures in the books. Yeah. And I didn't realize, like they came back and they're like, well, did you see this? And I was like, no, I listened to it. And they're like, oh, you gotta get it to see the pictures. That's awesome. Yeah. Two thumbs up for her. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jenny Lawson, if you haven't read her yet, put her on the list. She's a good one. It's quick, it's funny, it's, it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Isabella. Yeah. And let's have Jody share the book she's looking forward to in 2021. 
OK, well, I'm glad to hear Isabel is getting on board with audiobooks because audiobooks are like my thing and every book I'm going to talk about today is the audio version. Most of them, one of them was published ages ago and most of them have been out for or came out in 2020 or came out a little earlier, but the audio versions are recent. Go ahead. The first book I ever listened to was your recommendation on here for um, Wishful Drinking by oh. Karen Fisher. <laughs> that was the first audiobook I ever listened to. And you how could you not love it that? You in? It was great. But yeah. what you said made me think about how, you know, that's one of the key things that really every human being needs to practice more of is listening. Mm -hmm. Like audiobooks are the magic fix for that, right? Yeah. Start listening to some audiobooks. It'll help you develop your listening skills. <laughs> then when that little guy of yours is chattering your ear off, you'll, you know, have better listening skills. <laughs> right, Kristen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really helps me listen to my children. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> have volume um, a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn them up louder. Make sure you got really good earbuds right. and you can't hear the children. Okay. That's exactly what <laughs> Um, so anyway, all of the titles that I'm going to talk about are audio versions. The first one is The Yosemite by John Muir, and that's the one I was referring to that was written ages ago. Um, but they're releasing it as an audio, or just released it as an audio version. By the way, all three of these titles, this is the reason they were on my pick of what I want to listen to in 2021. Um, they were all part of the Audiophile Magazine's award winners for this past year. And so they give away awards for different things. Um, and, and I'll talk about that a little more when I get through this, but the person who's reading the Yosemite by John Muir um, is, is, a, is Scottish like John Muir was. And so his words, sound more naturally like John Muir's voice is kind of what they're recommending in the description of it. So um, it says in the in the description, there's never been a better time to indulge in John Muir's inspiring observations of California's most iconic wilderness. Crafted over the two years that Muir lived in a tiny cabin alongs alongside Yosemite Creek around 1870, the work was originally intended as a guidebook to what would become Yosemite National Park. Um, Nick McArdle's understated narration is intoxicatingly relaxing. Well, who can't go for an intoxicatingly relaxing wow. audiobook to listen to? I really can't wait to get to that one. Um, there are, of course, other titles. There must be about 50 titles on that list that I have, but these were the ones that I picked out that sounded the most intriguing, other than one that Kristen's going to talk about, which I'm on hold for. Um, and Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey is also kind of at the top of my list, but um, so the Yosemite is one of them. And I have not been to Yosemite National Park. I've been to quite a few national parks, but that's one I have not gone to. So um, kind of on my bucket list to do that. I did do one trip to California. It's a place I haven't spent much time and definitely haven't seen all the places I want to see, but um, did one trip there when my oldest child was 10. We took him to Lego land in Southern California and uh, that was a lot of fun, but uh, there's other lots of other places I want to see, including Yosemite, so. I was um, supposed to do Yosemite about 10 years ago and shockingly it was on fire. <laughs> so we had to detour that part of the vacation to not, to not Yosemite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you really have to be careful picking your time of year to go to places like that, which is so unfortunate. And um, yeah, you gotta, I mean, I feel like it's one of the places you have to get to before you can't, right? I, I, that's kind of one of the things that I think about with beautiful places like that. So um, second title on my list is The Quiet Americans by Scott Anderson. Um, and this is the story, it's a history of the Cold War as told through the adventures and misadventures of four CIA agents. Um, and it says that it's, uh, what does this say? R uh, Robertson Dean brings the steadiness, focus, and dramatic immediacy required for a long narrative, especially one that maintains four interwoven storylines, rich in incident, character, and historical import. This is one of the most provocative, most satisfying nonfiction audiobooks of the year. 
So I do a lot of nonfiction. As you guys know, I have a nonfiction book club that I host at Bedford, and that's a lot of what we read. And um, that whole Cold War period, um, I d when I was, I mean, both in high school and in college, I took like every history class that you could possibly take, even though I wasn't a history major in any way, shape or form, just because those were the things I really enjoyed. But that time period is something that we never studied in any kind of American history. Literally, we started at the beginning of American history and we went through World War II and then that was it. That was all we ever got to. And so that whole Cold War period and even through Kennedy, which I mean, Kennedy was assassinated just shortly before I was born, um, but like that kind of stuff wasn't taught yet when I was doing American history. And so I find it really fascinating and that's why I kind of look for things like this um, to help increase my knowledge about that. But any kind of history is really good for me. But um, and the last title that I had to talk about is The Fragile Earth. And um, because, you know, we all need to do better to protect the earth. And so these are writings from um, people who write for the New Yorker magazine and they're all about climate change. And so it says there's three different narrators for this one, and it says they narrate this timely collection of climate change nonfiction from the New Yorker magazine with engagement, clarity, and an admirable mix of insistence and calm. It's written by many of the magazine's most well-known authors. The piece is focused on how we got here, where we are, and what we can do now. The information they relay is serially eye-opening, terrifying, and riveting. Colbert's afterward doesn't comfort, but will make you get out of your car, turn down the heat and air conditioning, and eat fewer animals, preferably by yesterday. That's why the narrator's articulate, unruffled readings are essential. They keep us listening to news that must no longer be avoided. And that particular one is winner of the Audiophile Earphones Award, and the Earphones Award is given to who they think the best narrators are the ones that narrate um, the story most as the story was intended to be heard. So um, that they've never disappointed me that your phones awards um, titles have never disappointed me to listen to. So those are my picks. Nice. You got a, you got some good ones there. Jody's, Jody's got the ones that are going to make you learn. When we get to mine, mine are not really learning books. <laughs> mine, are, <laughs> mine are like, oh, I love this book. So, but thank you, Jody. And I love audiobooks, audiobooks in all shapes. And for me in particular, because I'm not a natural nonfiction reader, um, I find nonfiction on audio particularly compelling. And I'm not sure why that is, but it seems to help me understand it better rather than fighting with the text right. because they're interpreting that text for me. Yeah. So I do really find audio great for nonfiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and let's have Kristen share her choices for 2020. What is she looking forward to? Okay, so this one was real tricky because the more research I did, I was like, what, that book's coming out? Wait, that book's coming out? <laughs> I was like, wow, what am I gonna do? And then, so the first book I knew I immediately wanted to talk about because when I heard it was coming out, I was like, I'm getting on the list for that. And that, of course, is A Promised Land by Barack Obama. Um, and I really admire Barack Obama. He was the first president that I was able to vote for, and I voted for him. And that's something that's just kind of stuck with me um, because we all know that right to vote is so important. Um, and the more research I do into him, the more I feel like I align with his values and I just appreciate him as a person. So I'm really interested in reading this because um, from the reviews and the um, synopsis of it, it's just like a really honest, transparent way of him reflecting on his time um, for his uh, presidential time. Um, so I I'm interested in reading it because I'm sure that it's going to talk about his accomplishments, but with it being a reflection, I'm sure he's also going to reflect on some of the really hard times that he had while his while he was in the office for eight years. And so I'm curious to see what it says because I hold him in such high regard. I know not everybody is perfect, and so I'm just curious to see like how he talks about that in his own ways. Um, just also, I really enjoy his writing. 
and just the way that he talks, um, which I didn't look into this, but I wonder if he reads this audiobook. I was just going to say that he does. Because I will probably, so I'm on hold for the book, so I'll probably read the book and then request the audiobook because any of the authors. Yeah, that I mean, books, I've been considering. That's why I, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. That's why I yeah. said that about that would be one of my picks. Matthew McConaughey reads Green Lights too. So who who isn't going to want to love to listen to Barack Obama read to you? Right, and, like and just, Matthew McConaughey. I'd love to listen to him talk. <laughs> so that one is by far my number one. Um, the second one that I have is called Waking the Witch, Reflections on Women, Magic, and Power. And I've realized that recently, I've just kind of gone into this spiral of looking up historical and um, current um, witch books and witch articles. And just, it's fascinating to me how the concept of witch has changed through time. I mean, we're talking hundreds of years and it's I've talked on this before, but just this concept of it used to be a woman who was confident and who was independent was labeled a witch because she was different and she had this power in her. And it's also. Um, so let me talk about what this book is supposed to talk about before I, I'm like going to go on a tangent, but this book is supposed to talk about um, waking the witch in terms of cultural and a historical context. And so uh, the funny thing with this book, though, is I actually requested this book probably a couple months ago, and it was during this time where sometimes I just go on these binge requests where I'm like, oh, that book looks good. That book looks good. And then I'm like, I'm going to have time to read these and I don't. So then I have to send it back. Womp, womp. And I stumbled upon this podcast and I started reading it and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And then I realized that the podcast was by the author of this book. And I was like, OK, universe, I get it. I got to read this book. <laughs> so um, I did read through the reviews on Goodreads and it was very mixed. So I don't know how I feel. I probably should have stayed away from that. But I'm interested in this book because I I'm hoping that it has kind of um, like an anthropological view on it as far as like the culture and how that's changed over time. So I'm curious to see what aspects of uh, the witch that she brings out. And um, it also states that she talks about her own um, experience because she is a practicing pagan. Um, so it just looked like a really interesting read. Um, and then I also want to give a shout out to a book that's not being released until September. So this one is not currently in our catalog. Um, and I'm hoping that we get it when it's released, but it's called White Women, We Need to Talk, Doing Our Part to End Racism. This is by Karen Fleshman. Um, and I was excited to read this slowly based on the title. I mean, I'm a white woman that wants to learn about racism. Um, so I think because of my personal path and wanting to learn more about racism and what I can do to to form an anti-racist way of life and a way of thinking and to use those tools to help the people around me. It seemed like an obvious choice uh, in my journey this year of self-reflection, so. Thanks, Kristen. When I looked up the White Women We Need to Talk title, there seemed to be some debate about the release date. Oh, okay. It's in a couple different places. I saw the September 1st and then I saw in a, another place where they said it might be delayed. Oh, so okay. I just put fall of this year. So if you are out there listening and you're interested in that title, just make a note of it to check back in like August and hopefully we should have a firm release date by then. So thank you, Kristen. And let's have Jen share the title she's looking forward to in 2021, because I believe I misspoke earlier and said 2020. <laughs> so I'm having a really hard time leaving 2020 behind apparently. So 2021, Jen. OK, well, my books are not educational in any way either, um, but hopefully they're entertaining. So my first book um, I picked was Game Changer by Neil Shusterman. And I will read anything Neil Shusterman writes. So um, it pretty much I was like, oh, Neil Shusterman has a book coming out in 2020 to be read list. Um, it doesn't matter what it's about. I'm going to read it. But this one does sound really, really fascinating. So the synopsis is the main character, um, I don't have his name here, doesn't really matter, we haven't read it, but like, so it says all it takes is one hit on the football field and suddenly Ash, his name is Ash, Ash's life doesn't look quite the way he remembers it. So the plot of this book is going to be um, that he takes a bad hit and he starts like stumbling through different dimensions and so 
each sort of dimension is a little bit different. So um, one, the changes are small, then they spiral out of control as Ash slides into universes where he has everything he's ever wanted, universes where society is stuck in the past, universes where he finds himself in a different way of looking. So I read some um, early reviews. This book comes out next month. It comes out in February. So if you're interested, I know there's when I checked this morning, the list only had two people on it, but as more people get word out, Schusterman's really popular, it's going to grow. Um, it sounds like it takes on a lot of things that are happening in our society. It mentioned racism, it mentioned um, like homophobia, um, other like, sounds like maybe even some societal things. So it sounds like this book is going to do, um, you know, where like the, the Scythe series kind of took on death. I think this one's going to take on our societal issues that are larger. And Schusterman is so good at taking these really, really complicated, heavy topics and making them entertaining. So I'm looking forward to see what he does with the heavy societal things that we deal with. Um, and it sounds really fascinating and I just, you can't go wrong with Schusterman. The other book that I want to read, um, this author I've mentioned numerous times, if you are following along with our literary libations, it's Wild Sign. It's an Alpha and Omega book um, by Patricia Briggs. So this is actually part of a series. These, this, this Wild or the Alpha and Omega series, um, they do build on each other. So if you haven't read the others, you might want to revisit them and you have some time. This book comes out in March. Um, but you don't really have to if you read them as standalone it's okay so what this series is um it follows a pair of mated werewolves basically their husband and wife charles and anna and um i like this series because it's also it's supernatural it's you know fantasy but it also they tend to kind of have a little mystery in there as well which i find interesting so this one um is going to take a place in the wilds of Northern California, where a small isolated town, everyone has gone missing. And there's no really local jurisdiction for this area, but it happens to be owned by um, the werewolf pack that Charles is a part of. And so Charles and Anna are gonna be sent in to try to figure out what happened in this town. And I love Patricia Briggs' stories. If you like, um, if you like fantasy, particularly werewolves, but there's all the other supernatural creatures kind of thrown in there too. Um, I love, 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 love her. She's one of my favorite authors. And this series is a spinoff from her Mercy Thompson series, which is one of my favorites. But it's like I said, it's a little more mystery. Um, there's definitely a lot of relationship stuff. Your two main characters are a married couple who are, you know, madly in love with one another. And that's kind of fun. Um, I just, I'm, I cannot wait to get back into this world. One of the things I did in 2020 was reread all of the mercy verse <laughs> the mercedes thompson series plus the uh, alpha and omega series i read them all in chronological order um just a totally nerd out and comfort read and i cannot wait to read her latest installment in this in this world so nice the books i chose i think are i like say you said it's a comfort read i yeah. think that's the two that i chose are both authors that i've read before and loved and they're coming out with new books and that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, when, when I was compiling my list of what I talk, wanted to talk about, I had some other things that were a little more like educational. And then I was like, nope, nope, I'm going with just pure entertainment. <laughs> what do I what do I happily want to read? Yeah, just for, you know, to make myself feel good. <laughs> that's right. That's what mine are, too. Um, so my first one is actually and please, if you're listening, and you're like, why are you talking about the sixth book in a series? Because you know, why would I go and pick up the sixth book in a series? Please don't, you know, um, Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire, sixth book in the Wayward Children series. It sounds like this one is a standalone, but if you want to get started at the beginning, I highly recommend the first book, which is Every Heart a Doorway. And I did go back and look it up to see if I had talked about Every Heart a Doorway before, and I did. Um, and Every Heart a Doorway, these books focus on children and young adults who have experienced portals to different worlds. So you're looking at, you know, like things like Narnia or Alice in Wonderland, where you walk through a doorway or a wardrobe and you are 
whisked into this entirely other world that doesn't operate by any of the same rules that you're used to in our world. And what I love about these books, it particularly Every Heart a Doorway, because that one focuses on Eleanor's home for wayward children, which are these children that have gone into these worlds and these worlds reflect their hearts. Like it reflects their deepest desires. So the worlds might be wild and crazy and illogical, or they might be barren landscapes and just wastelands, or there might be one girl who her whole world was statues and stillness and quiet. And that was what her heart craved. And when they were in these worlds, they truly felt like they belonged. This is where they were supposed to be. But then something happened and they weren't allowed to stay there and they're pushed back into our world. And now they're stuck here after having been where they feel they truly belong. And so Eleanor created the school for these children and young adults to have a place to survive. Because if you're someplace where you think this is where I belong and you're forced out and you can't find a way back, that's traumatic. And so the first book is centers on that school and the kids that have lost those worlds and how they are surviving. Um, I do want to mention here while the book focuses on teenagers, this is not a don't hand this to your 12 year old book. There is graphic violence, there's sex in these. So make sure that you're giving this to the right age group. <laughs> these are older teenager adult novels. Um, and across the green grass fields, I'm super excited about. All I have is the little blurb that's on the book, but it says Regan loves and is loved, though her school friend situation has become complicated of late. But when she suddenly finds herself thrust through a doorway that asks her to be sure before swallowing her whole, Regan must learn to live in a world filled with centaurs, kelpies, and other magical equines. Magical equines, unicorns, people. Unicorns are in this book. <laughs> I'm so excited. I loved all of Shane and McGuire's other books. Oh, and yeah. this one's got unicorns. So I'm so excited. I don't, it doesn't really matter. Beyond that, I'm, I was going to read it no matter what. Wherever the world was set, I was going to pick it up and read it. But unicorns, I can hardly wait. And this book comes out next week. So I got to finish the book that I'm reading right now so that as soon as I get my hands on this one, I can go home and start reading it. And I these remember are you talking about books. the first one and I, I have it written down and I'm, I, yeah, this is a series I need to start. Yes, and they're really short. Like I wanna say they're under 200 pages easy. So they aren't long. In fact, like the first time I read um, Every Heart or Doorway, I was super disappointed that it wasn't longer because I felt that she definitely could have gone into these worlds and these characters much more. Um, mm -hmm. I actually listened to that one, Every Heart a Doorway, I listened to, and I, I think I finished it, like, maybe not a day, but a day and a half, like, seriously, just a day of doing laundry, and I finished that yeah. audio, audio book, yeah. so They're they great. must be pretty short books. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it, too, so. Well, good. Yay! <laughs> so, yes, Across the Green Grass Fields, super excited. Unicorns! And then my other one is also a sequel and I am guessing that you would want to read the first book prior to this one. This is just the second book, The Hidden Palace by Helene Wecker and this is coming out in June and it is the sequel to The Golem and the Genie oh. and The Golem and the Genie actually came out in 2013. So it's been seven years or so since that book was published and I loved it. And now it's time for a sequel and I'm kind of super nervous how it's going to go. Um, the, the Golem and the Genie was Helene Wecker's first novel and I thought it was amazing. And she has chosen instead of doing an entirely different world and something different for her second novel, she has chosen to do a sequel and that makes me super nervous because I was perfectly happy with the way Golem and the Genie ended and now she's going back to those characters. So got some nerves about that. But the golem and the genie is about exactly what it says, a golem and a genie. So a golem is part of Jewish mythology and it is a creature created out of clay. 
usually as something that will protect the person who created it. It will protect and serve them. Um, it has intelligence, but it doesn't have free will and it doesn't have a soul. And so in the golem and the genie, there's Hava, who is the golem. And through all sorts of adventures and happenings, she ends up in New York City in 1899. So you have Hava, and then you have Ahmad, who is a genie, and he's, you know, lived hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. But again, he's not human. He's different from humans. He's alone. He doesn't know that there are other genie out there. And somehow in 1899, New York City, Hava and Ahmad meet. And they also have humans in their lives that they are attached to for various reasons. And it's just, I just loved the characters. My review of that novel, I gave it five stars. So I really liked it because I don't give a lot of things five stars. But um, it is a unique story that does exactly what you want a story to do. Draws you in completely and thoroughly. I love magic mixed with historical time periods. Um, and yet, as it draws you in, it also reflects back some piece of truth about what it means to live. Even though these are mythical creatures, it ends up speaking to what it means to be human. And so now I get to go back and spend more time with Hava and Ahmad. And I don't want to say much more because I want you to read the first one. But we're back in New York City. It's the early 1900s. And I'm crossing my fingers that I love them as much the second time around as I did the first time. So that book comes out in June. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I have read that one and listened to it. It's fabulous either way. Um, so those are my two 2021 reads that I can hardly wait to get my hands on. Did you listen to it on audio disc or did you listen to it on a platform? 2013, I was probably doing a CD. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, I, was like, oh, I, just so I have no idea if it's available. I don't know if Golem and the Genie is available. I, I want to kind of say it's not, but I could be wrong. Because I, I know like Hoopla gets different stuff yeah, in and out. Okay. And they also just recently got all of the recorded books. But I haven't looked to see whether or not. But back then, I probably had the CD in my car. <laughs> so, Sometimes all I right. CD. Well, thank you, everybody, for sharing the books you're looking forward to in 2021. Thank you to those of you who listened. And next week, we are going to be sharing books that inspire our creative side because January is National Creativity Month. So we're going to be sharing books that make us want to be a little bit more creative. So we hope that you enjoyed listening and we hope that you have a great week. Thank you. Bye.